bold prediction time. What do you believe about this season that you would bet your own money on? <sighs> the first one is well above a nine on the boldness scale. Producer Jesse and I went back and forth feverishly today on what the boldness rating should be on this. So listen to what John's predicting. Not surprisingly, hailing from College Station, but he says he's a Razorback, not an Aggie. John says Texas a and is going to win the national championship at plus 6,000 odds. All the talent, the Petrino offense, chip on their shoulder, traditional power, new quarterback, there's a path. It should be noted that John sent this to us May 14th. Well, today it is July 9th, which is good because it illustrates what's happened in the odds market. When John sent that, a and was plus 6,000 to win the national title. You know what they are now? They're plus 2,800. One of the biggest movers in the national championship odds market. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means a lot of folks have bet on Texas A&M to win the national title. That's what it means. Now they're up there tied for 11th. They've got the same odds as Notre Dame. They've got better odds than Tennessee to win the national championship. Uh, lost in the commotion of last year and lost in the commotion of Bobby Petrino coming in and all of that is the fact that they're quietly returning the number two defense in S&P+. I shouldn't even say returning. Bill Connolly has them ranked as the number two defense in preseason, S&P+. And here's another good stat from producer Jesse. You take the top 100 recruits A&M's ever signed in the history of their program, all 900 years, out of the top 100 kids they've ever signed, do you know 26 of them are on their current roster? Over a quarter of the top 100 players signed in the history of that program are on campus right now. And guys, that's after a bunch of them left this past spring and summer. Having said that, it'd be tough for me to see A&M winning the national championship. So I'm putting a 9.25 on this. Yeah, I feel good about it. 9.25. Next up, this one's kind of out of nowhere, but you need to be paying attention to it. Anybody who talks ACC right now, they're going Clemson and Florida State, right? Maybe some Miami sprinkled in. Noel from Fort Myers said, my bold prediction for this season is Louisville wins 10 games in Jeff Brom's first year as head coach there. This is not all that bold to me. This is a 7.25 on the boldness scale. Now, I know some of you out there don't exactly have the ACC helmet grid schedule next to you. So you may not be familiar with Louisville's schedule. Well, let me tell you what it has. It has no Florida State. It has no Clemson. It has no North Carolina. They get Notre Dame at home. There is no back-to-back -back road stretch on this schedule. It is as favorable a draw as you could possibly have gotten in the ACC. Also, Louisville, a sneaky good roster, they brought in Jack Plummer, quarterback, and that's a guy who came in from Cal, but he's familiar with Brahms offense. And last year at Cal, 21-9, TD to INT ratio, it had a 63% completion percentage. Pretty good player. Doesn't have to learn the system, familiar with the system. I just, I'm not deterred by the churn at head coach. Most Louisville fans are happier with their head coaching situation now than they were. So Louisville winning 10 games this year. That it wouldn't necessarily mean they're one of the best teams in the country. You're not always what your record says you are in college football. A lot of that has to do with schedule. This would be the perfect case study of that. So they win 10 games this year. It would not stun me. I would not be on the floor. I'm going to put a 7.25 on the boldness scale for that. Next up, this gets a little bolder. Major from College Park, Maryland says, Maryland's finally going to take a jump. They're going to beat Michigan or Ohio State this season. Timeout. There's my first time out of the show. Take a sip from the chalice. Earmuffs, kids. I need those of you who don't already follow me on social. So go ahead and follow me, at Lake Kick Josh. I'm even on threads. But I want you to go to Twitter. And I want you to look at what I put out after dark last night. I had to wait till the sun went down for this one. It's a little graphic. There is, nature is just wild. So I saw Tom Fornelli put it out there, and then I just stole it from him. I don't know what to say. I love stealing things. It's just something I do. I stopped caring a long time ago. So I look at the video, and it's so bizarre. And this is going to tie back into Maryland, I promise you. There is a jaguar, one of the most fierce animals on the planet, scared of nothing. 
there's a jaguar sitting there in the jungle. There are these two tortoises, tortai, the plural of tortoise, and they're just moseying along, and they walk right past the jaguar, and the jaguar lets them pass. And then the tortai go behind the jaguar, and you know what they did? Unspeakable things. And the male tortoise had his mouth wide open while he was doing it. Total YOLO style. When you say you only live once, they fully embraced it that afternoon. And so God bless them. I took it as a sign. I probably went and bet a few dollars on Maryland right after that. And lo and behold, we got Maryland in the show tonight. So Maryland's going to beat either Ohio State or Michigan. I normally would call this an 8.75, but in honor of the Tordai and the video that we saw with the Jaguar, I'm bumping it down to an eight. Maybe it'll happen. You know, they played Michigan really close last year. They lost by seven to Michigan. They lost by 13 to Ohio State. That's the kind of good news. Uh, the bad news is they're one and 18 against these teams over the past 19 times they've played. However, Mike Loxley has Maryland coming off the best season they've had in quite a while. They've got Talia Tagovailoa back. He was out at Elite 11 too. I forgot to tell you guys about that. What if they were in the Big Ten West? They just get lost in the East. That's their problem. That's why we're doing away with divisions. If Maryland was in the West, a lot of folks would be favoring them to win the thing. I was, I was well, Jesse was looking at S&P Plus today earlier and probably the most reputable preseason rating system out there until the JP poll comes out, of course. And uh, the JP poll heavily factors that in too, I won't lie. You know where Maryland is? You know where they stack up nationally? Maryland's right there with Louisville. They're right there with Miami, Texas Tech, NC State. It's just that they get lost because no one expects them to beat Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. And uh, again, that's why divisions are one of the many tools of the devil. They're 40th in preseason S&P Plus, 40th. They replace four offensive linemen. That's the tough part. Now, they do get Maryland right after Maryland plays Penn State, and Maryland's got to go to Maryland, or uh, Mar Michigan, has got to go to Maryland, and that's the second stretch for Michigan of a back-to-back -back road stretch. So that's the one you probably circle? Probably? We'll see. I'm going to put an eight on that one, eight on the boldness scale. And lastly, this one's the highest boldness rating I've given so far. Harris from Clearwater, Florida. A team will sweep all the positional offensive awards. So quarterback award, Davey O'Brien, I think. Uh, running back is the Doak Walker Award. Wide receiver is the Bolitnikoff Award. Uh, only one team's done this since producer Jesse has been alive, and that was 2020 Alabama. Najee, because they ran him a ton, won the running back award. You had Mac Jones win the quarterback. You had Devontae Smith win wide receiver. They won the Joe Moore Award, offensive line for good measure. I uh, think it's the best offense I've seen this generation. Outside of that, no one's pulled this off. I don't think it's going to happen this year. I was looking at the teams, and every one of them that has a quarterback that could do it, you look at running back, and they're, they're not going to feature a running back enough. That's the thing that gets in the way. It's not even a bad thing. It's just a thing. Like that Alabama team just happened to have Najee Harris on it, who was indestructible and a multi-purpose threat out of the backfield. I mean, he was a huge threat to catch the ball. So he got enough yardage and was used enough that he did his thing while Devontae Smith was doing his thing. It just, it takes such a perfect storm to do that. And I don't think that any offense out there is going to have that set up the way Alabama did. So I'm making that a 9.75. That's, that's tough, man. And also you get voter resentment sometimes where even if you do technically have the best QB running back and wide receiver trio in America, some loser out there is going to vote against you just to spite you. Yeah, they do it in the Heisman all the time. Why wouldn't they do it in other awards? Couldn't be me. You know, we need our own award season. That's what we need. We got all kinds of awards. We got a Floyd of Supremacy behind us here. New name for Floyd of Rosedale. Maybe we'll look into that. Herb Street does his own award show. Why not? We already stole Fornelli's video. Let's, let's steal Herb Street's concept too.